Lyceum of the Philippines Module 5, Safety Principles of Survival in Relation to Fire. At the end of this module the students will be able to identify the different sources of fire and the proper device to extinguish it. Qualify the different fire extinguishers according to their use. Theory of Fire Fire Hazard Extinguishing Agents Methods Fire Prevention Aboard the cruise ship Carnival Triumph Dry Dock Refurbishment in Cadiz, Spain. There are no reported injuries, although the fire was very striking. Due to the nature of the highly combustible materials, there was a very dense black smoke. It took three days for some gallant little tugboats to tow it into port in Mobile. Carnival Triumph will be renamed Carnival Sunrise and the vessel will sail back across the Atlantic sailing four to five day itineraries from Norfolk, Virginia. A. Theory of Fire Fire oxidation is a chemical process that a material combines with oxygen. During this process, energy is given off in form of heat. Rusting of iron or rotting of wood is common examples of slow oxidation. Fire or combustion is the result of rapid oxidation and energy is given off in the form of heat and light. In order for any substance to oxide, its molecules must be well surrounded by oxygen molecules. Molecules of any solid or liquid are too tightly packed to be surrounded. Thus only vapor can burn. When a solid or liquid is gradually heated, its molecules move around rapidly and some molecules will break away from its surface and form vapor just above its surface. This vapor will mix with oxygen and start to burn. The burning vapor produces heat that releases and ignites more vapor from the material concerned thus starting a chain reaction. Fire is a chemical reaction involving rapid oxidation, burning, of fuel. The following three elements must present the same time in order for a fire to start. A. Fuel. Any combustible material, flammable gases, liquids, solids. Most solids and liquids must vaporize before they will burn. B. Oxygen. Sufficient oxygen, present in the air. Oxidizing substances, must be present in the atmosphere surrounding the fuel for fire to burn. C. Heat. Sufficient heat energy, hot surfaces, electrical equipment, smoking, naked lights, must be applied to raise the fuel to its ignition temperature. The combination of these three elements is frequently referred to as, fire triangle. The removal of any of these elements will result in the fur being extinguishers or no fire at all. Fire extinguishers will extinguish a fire by removing one or more elements of the fire triangle. If a fourth element, chain reaction, is added to this basic fire triangle, it will result in the formation of fire tetrahedron that represents a continuously burning fire. It illustrates how flaming combustion is supported and sustained through a chain reaction. The fire tetrahedron is a four-sided geometric representation of the four factors necessary for fire. Fuel, any substance that can undergo combustion, heat, heat energy sufficient to release vapor from the fuel and cause ignition, exodizing agent, air containing oxygen, and uninhibited chemical chain reaction. The fuel-air ratio must within flammable limits, which describes the amount of vapor in air necessary to propagate flame. Removing any of these four factors prevents suppress or control the fire. A. Surrounding air refers to the oxygen content of the surrounding air. To support flaming combustion, oxygen volume in the air should be minimum 16% combustion can however continue with oxygen volume in air as less as 3%. B. Shipboard solid fuels include cordage, canvas, dunnage, wiping rags, furniture, mattresses and a wide variety of solid cargo. Shipboard liquid fuels include oil cargo, bunker fuels, lubricating oils, paints and thinners. D. Diesel oils and kerosene. E. On board a ship, heat can be obtained from a flame of a matchstick or cigar, sparks caused by ferrous metals striking together, heat generated by friction, lightning, an oxyacetylene torch cutting or welding metal, electric short circuit, electric arc between conductors or overheating of an electric motor. Also sufficient heat can be produced internally by spontaneous ignition. B. Fire hazard A fire hazard is a potential fire accident that can happen at an industrial workplace. The main cause behind a major fire hazard is negligence and carelessness, 
which can lead to a wide range of accidents such as a fatality, an injury, environmental damage, business loss and so on. A fire hazard has a greater possibility of occurring in the oil and gas industry, mainly due to the fact that workers are surrounded by flammable liquids and gases that can explode. An emergency response plan is prepared to tackle such occupational hazards and prevent them from causing more damage in the oil and gas industry. A fire hazard is a possible danger to the workers and the environment. A fire hazard can be defined as an accidental fire that can occur due to carelessness, such as improperly storing or transporting fuels or an exposure to combustible gas. The likelihood of accidents happening is high and employees are more susceptible to the consequences, which can lead to a loss of life, serious injuries, an uncontrolled explosion, damage to the environment and asset loss. Therefore, oil and gas manufacturers must follow an emergency response plan to combat an actual occurrence and deal with it effectively. Smoking and naked lights. Careless smoking tops the list of causes of fire. Smoking is a strong habit and as such not only people tend to smoke without any regard to circumstances or location but also they hardly pay any heed to the safe disposal of lit cigarettes, cigars, pipe, tobacco and matchsticks. Temperature of a burning cigarette is about 500 degrees Celsius. Thus glowing ashes and tobacco contain enough heat to start a fire in such materials as dunnage, paper, cardboard, cordage, linen and beddings. If a person has tried after a busy day and smoking in bed, a fire can result if the glowing tobacco touches the bedding, resulting smoke will most certainly cause drowsiness and possible suffocation or asphyxiation of this person before the fire is discovered. A person who has been drinking alcohol and smoking too, tends to be careless and has to be observed carefully by other crew members so that his careless actions do not jeopardize safety of crew and vessel. Thus open flames, glowing embers and smoke can prove dangerous as well as unhygienic. Smoking is therefore permitted on board a ship, only in designated smoking areas. These areas must be identified and clearly marked thus. In port, shore personnel boarding vessel for various works should be apprised of shipboard smoking regulations as well as locations of designated smoking areas on board. Safety matches and or cigarette lighters must never be carried on person outside DHIPSC accommodation ship's accommodation. Many terminals expressly forbid smoking or even carrying on person of matchboxes and or cigarette lighters around their premises. A. Within the accommodation, shipboard smoking policy must be conspicuously displayed. B. Never smoke in bed under any circumstances. On board, designated smoking area will be identified in the shipboard smoking policy and clearly marked thus. c. Carrying of lighters and or safety matchboxes on person out on main deck is expressly forbidden. Shipboard smoking policy. a. On sea care ships, smoking is allowed only in designate smoking areas. b. On board, and clearly marked c. Carrying of lighters and or safety matchboxes on person out on main deck is expressly forbidden. Smoking policy on board. A. At sea, designated smoking areas are. Officers smoke room crews smoke room wheelhouse engine control room, ECR. B. In port designated smoking areas are. Crews smoke room master's cabin officers smoke room. Spontaneous combustion and auto ignition. Some materials when damp or soaked with paints, oils of vegetable origin in particular can ignite without external application of heat. Auto ignition temperature of a material is the temperature at which a flammable material will ignite without initiation of a spark or flame. Spontaneous combustion is the process of gradual increase in temperature of a material as a result of oxidation, without drawing any heat from its surrounding. This process finally results in ignition of the material concerned. Lagging on steam pipes or cotton rags if soaked with oils and or paints and stocked in a warm area without ventilation is prone to spontaneous combustion. This oil begins to oxidize and produces heat in the process. This heat causes the remaining oil to oxidize faster and produce still more heat that will start building up around the rag. This in turn will ignite any other flammable substance resulting in a major fire. Petroleum liquids when heated sufficiently will ignite without the application of a naked flame. 
when fuel or lube oil under pressure sprays onto a hot surface, it will get hotter and will auto-ignite as a result. Any oil-saturated lagging must be removed at once and safely disposed of. Oily rags. Rags used for cleaning paint drum or soaked in paint thinners, sawdust impregnated with oil should be in a safe location in covered containers and disposed of in a proper way as early as possible. Oil feeder piping need attention to avoid oil being sprayed from leaks. Electrical circuits and electrical equipment electricity is a safe if the equipment concerned is properly insulated and wired. If worn out, misused or poorly wired electrical energy is converted into heat and the equipment concerned becomes a source of ignition and thus a fire hazard. Any electrical equipment on board must be installed, maintained, tested and repaired in accordance with existing regulations and only by qualified personnel. Electrical wires that have bad insulation should be renewed fuses and circuit breakers installed will be proper size for their respective circuits. Jury rigging of an electrical outlet, to connect more than one appliance on one outlet, should be avoided. Prior leaving cabin for work, crew member must switch off every light bulb in the cabin. Electrical motors should be regularly inspected, tested, lubricated and cleaned. While storage batteries are being charged, they emit hydrogen, which is lighter than air and a highly flammable gas. A battery room thus should have ventilation at the highest point. Ship's galley smoking is strictly forbidden in ship's galley. Electrical power to any hot plate not in use must be switched off. Used boxes, bags, paper, food leftovers should be placed in covered non-combustible refuse bins. Hoods, filters and ductwork for cooking rangers to be thoroughly cleaned every week and no oil grease accumulation allowed in and around hot plates. For some flammable liquids, rate of vapor release is over a wide temperature range e.g. gasoline gives off vapor even at minus 43 C thus proving itself a continuous fire hazard. Bunker fuels and lube oils must be heated to release sufficient vapor for combustion. But once a light or heavy flammable liquid is burning, Radiation feedback classification of fire fires are classed according to fuel and most effective extinguishing agent. There are three classes of common fires and two specialty classes. Class A. Note, although ABC dry chemical extinguishers shall not be permitted. Types of fire extinguishers. Water and foam fire extinguishers extinguish the fire by taking the heat element of the fire triangle. Water extinguishers are for class of fires only, they should not be used on class B or C fires. The discharge stream could spread the flammable liquid in a class B fire or could create a shock hazard on a class C fire. Carbon dioxide fire extinguishers extinguish fire by taking away the oxygen element of the fire triangle and also are removing the heat with a very cold discharge. Carbon dioxide can be used on class B and C fires. They are usually ineffective on class of fires. Dry chemical fire extinguishers extinguish the fire of fire extinguisher as the multi-purpose dry chemical that is effective on class A, B, and C fires. Wet chemical is a new agent and prevents reignition by creating a barrier between the oxygen they are ineffective on all other classes of fires. Water mist extinguishers are a recent development that extinguishes the fire by taking away the heat element of the fire triangle. They are an alternative to the clean agent extinguishers. Extinguishers are primarily for class of fires, although they are safe for use on class C fires as well. Cartridge operated dry chemical fire extinguishers extinguish the fire primarily by interrupting the chemical reaction of the fire triangle. Like the stored pressure dry chemical extinguishers, the multi-purpose dry chemical is effective on class A, B, and C fires. It is important to use the correct extinguisher for the type of fuel. Using the incorrect agent can allow the fire to reignite after apparently being extinguished successfully. Fire prevention Fire prevention relates to the goal of educating members of workplaces and the public in taking proactive steps to prevent fires from starting and to reduce the harmful impact of fires. While fire prevention is the primary task of fire, many departments have a fire prevention officer who is tasked with educating the community regarding fire safety. Fire prevention education encompasses the following key messages, stop, drop, and roll technique, 
This is the most effective way to smother flames if your clothes catch on fire, install a smoke detector. They reduce the chance of mortality by 50%. Regularly maintain smoke detectors. The most common cause of non-working detectors is missing or faulty batteries. Batteries should be changed twice per year. Heat detector A heat detector is a fire alarm device designed to respond when the convicted thermal energy of a fire increases and conductivity of the element regulate the rate flow of heat into the element. All heat detectors have this thermal lag. Heat detectors have two main classifications of operation, rate of rise, and fixed temperature. Smoke detector A smoke detector is a sensor that detects smoke as a primary indication of fire. It provides a signal to a fire alarm system in a large building, or produces an audible and visual signal locally in a room or a home. Smoke detectors are usually housed in a small, round-shaped plastic case, and placed at the roof where there are risks of fire or fire hazards. There are two main types of smoke detectors, photoelectric and ionization. When smoke enters the detector chamber, a photoelectric type detects sudden scattering of light, whereas an ionization type detects the change of electrical current flow that triggers the signal, indicating the presence of smoke. Smoke detectors have an average life of about 10 years. Detectors need to be tested periodically and the batteries changed when required. Ionization types contain radioactive material called americium. The amount of radiation from americium, generally, is not harmful, but intake through the mouth or inhalation by children may cause health issues. When used at home, some detectors use both technologies in combination with heat detectors to be more accurate. UV flame The UV flame detector is designed to protect high-risk areas where a possible fire will spread quickly, with few or no early stage of fire or flame, where inflammation is almost instantaneous, like flammable liquid, fuel gases, petrochemicals products. Infrared flame detector The infrared flame detector used to detect open fire indoors or outdoors. This detector is suitable for liquid and gas fires that do not produce smoke and fire on material that contains carbon and develop thick smoke. It's usually applied to large industrial warehouse, oil refineries, machine rooms, power stations, printing plants, timber storage and underground tunnels. Manual call points. Fire manual call points are for the user, the operating principle is based on breaking the glass embedded, which results in sending an alarm signal to the central, lighting also a LED dough signaling activity. The visual signaling is the placement of signs or pictograms, formats, design and color which gave indications for, important points to consider for fire prevention on board ships in engine room, waste bins used for storing oily rags must have lids covers. Also, oil shouldn't be taken in to turbochargers during operation. Short-sounding pipes should be kept shut with plugs. Never should they be left in open position for the sake of convenience. Ship's crew should be careful about galley fires, especially by keeping electrical equipment in good order. One of the patent methods of fire prevention is effective and regular fire patrol. All care should be taken to dispose cigarettes, using self-closing ashtrays, and never should one smoke in bed. Fires have also caused during loading and unloading of cargo such as coal. For this reason, ship personnel must always discuss the characteristics of the cargo and preventive methods to be taken during safety meetings and weekly drills thank you prepared by, Rosalie Clave.